Welcome back. Welcome to lesson 2 in this mini course, An Understanding of Authority. In this lesson, we'll cover the following. 1. What authority is, its definition, forms, and attributes. 2. Purpose of authority. 3. Sources of authority. 4. Exercising authority from multiple sources. For the purpose of this course, I decided to skip the lesson on power because for all purposes and intent in this course, power and authority are essentially the same. Therefore, a separate lesson on power and leadership will amount to needless repetition. So what is authority? Like many concepts, authority has a few definitions and thus exists in various forms. Authority is defined as a moral or legal right or ability to control. In another usage, it is an official permission to do something. Authority can also refer to an individual who is an expert in a subject and whose opinions influence others in that field. For instance, Professor Wole Shoyinka is an authority in the field of literature. Finally, authority refers to an individual or a group of people with official responsibility for a particular area of activity. For example, local government authority, health authority. Among many definitions, the one that best suits our purpose states that authority is the legitimate power, right or ability to give orders, make decisions and enforce compliance. What are the attributes of authority? From the definition, authority has the following attributes. 1. Legitimacy. 2. Right or ability to give orders. 3. Right or ability to make decisions. 4. Capacity to enforce its rights, orders, and decisions, and accountability to the giver. With these attributes, what purpose does authority serve? On the basis of the attributes, authority is not an hand in itself. It is a means to an hand. Hence, authority is normally conferred on people in order to accomplish certain things on behalf and in the interest of the conferring entity. To fulfill its purpose, authority must be exercised or exerted by the carrier. Hence, carriers exercise their right to give order, make decisions and enforce compliance. The carriers are expected to be obeyed by those under, under their jurisdiction. Consequently, authority influences its subject by enforcing obedience. It fulfills its purpose by enforcing control with reward or punishment. It is noteworthy that the exercise of authority is subjective as it depends on the personality or disposition of the carrier. Let's take a look at someone with authority, a traffic warden. He has the authority, not the power, to control traffic. With this authority, he can order men and women who are stronger, richer, and more educated to stop in traffic or move in a specific direction. And they must stop or move as directed unless they want to break traffic law, which is a punishable offense. You don't feel inspired to stop by the waving of the warden's hand, you just have to obey. Neither are you expected to like him, just obey. His authority is backed by law and enforceable by law enforcement officers of the state. So that guy is an agent of the state and has the state power to back his authority. Having understood the purpose of authority, how do we get authority? So let's talk about sources of authority. Some of the sources of authority identified by people are legal or formal, traditional, acceptance, charisma, and competence. For the purpose of this lesson, we'll consider the following sources of authority. Position. It derives from the virtue of position occupied. Task. Comes from assignments from a higher power or authority or a group. Competence. Authority derives from people's acceptance, admiration, and respect of expert knowledge and individual processes. For example, medical doctors. Leadership. This authority derives from the permission people give to someone to lead them. Tradition. This derives from social norms and cultural practices that confer authority on certain persons or positions for example, traditional rulers. Is it possible for an individual to secure authority from multiple sources? 
Yes. Let's look at multiple sources of authority. An individual may combine two or more forms of authority from multiple sources. Imagine a world-renowned expert on education management who is appointed a minister of education. He is an authority by virtue of his expertise and has authority by virtue of his office. Additionally, it could be requested to represent the president of his country in an event on education for heads of state. It means that in addition to the first two forms of authority, this person has authority, another authority to act on behalf of his president. This shows that one can exercise multiple forms of authority derived from different sources in a particular situation. In conclusion, in this lesson, we covered definition of authority, its attributes, purpose, sources, and exercising authority from multiple sources. As we wrap up this lesson, these are for you points to ponder. 1. What sources of authority are available to you? 2. How can you acquire authority from other sources? 3. How can you exercise multiple authorities in different situations? As we round off, provide your answers to these questions in the worksheet to get more value from this lesson. With our understanding of leadership and authority, what is the relationship between the two? We will cover that in the next lesson. Thank you very much and see you there.